ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونتوب اليه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الامي وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما الحمد لله والشكر لله الحمد لله والشكر لله الحمد لله والشكر لله All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him we thank him we glorify his name subhanahu wa ta'ala we believe in him we affirm our belief in him subhanahu wa ta'ala and we trust in him fully <laughs> As our masters have said, التوكل الاسترسال على الله الاسترسال على الله على ما يريد. The Imam Sahil ibn Abdullah al-Tustari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says that التوكل, reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is to just let go. الاسترسال مع الله على ما يريد. أفهم. الاسترسال مع الله على ما يريد. The Imam Sahil ibn Abdullah al-Tustari, he said, التوكل or reliance on Allah ta'ala is to just let go, is to release and let go with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on what He wants. And so we affirm that our tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we wholeheartedly embrace and, and strive to implement this beautiful virtue of tawakkul, that we believe in Allah and we, re we rely on Him subhanahu wa ta'ala with whatever unfolds in our lives of the divine decree. And we thank Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, we praise Him, and we remind ourselves of the divine mandate to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah ta'ala says, O oh, people of belief, have taqwa of Allah as much as His is right. That have taqwa of Allah as much as He deserves subhanahu wa ta'ala, which we can never have in reality. That the reality of that is something beyond our capacity, and so that the, the, the tafsir of that, according to our masters, is the ayah that says, That have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you are able to. And that this is really, if we exert ourselves to the utmost in implementing taqwa, which is to avoid everything, everything that Allah Ta'ala dislikes, everything that brings about the displeasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, that this is the reality of taqwa. That taqwa comes from wiqaya in the Arabic language. And a wiqaya is a shield. And so we, if we struggle to shield ourselves from what's haram. We struggle to shield ourselves, to protect ourselves, to put a barrier between us and everything that it displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it brings about His wrath subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so He says, And do not die except as Muslims. And so just reflecting on this blessing of Islam, that we have the ni'mah of truth, that we believe in objective reality and truth with a capital T. And that Alhamdulillah wa shukrulillah, Allah Ta'ala has graced us, He has honored us, He has blessed us with Iman, with belief in Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that if we realize the reality of this blessing, that we would be overwhelmed and we would be in a state of bewilderment. That the reality of embracing truth <coughs> is that it is a key, La ilaha illallah miftah al jannah. It is a key to sa'ada. It is a key to eternal felicity. And that we live in a world, especially in our time, in this place, where such belief is mocked, and such belief is belittled, and such belief is seen as superstitious. But this, we have a secret that they don't realize. We have a secret that they don't realize. That the secret that we have is Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Allahumma salli ala sallam Muhammad that Allah Ta'ala has blessed us to, to get to know this person and that even our theologians will say 
are theologians that specialize in proving the existence of Allah and His attributes. They say they they, they present many rational proofs for the for the existence of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, but they mention that the greatest proof, even rationally, is Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's such a human being. When you get to know him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the more we try to learn about him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and his reality, all it can mean is that he is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. There is no way a human being can be like that unless he is a true prophet, Sadaqa Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that everything he conveyed to us is absolute truth. And who is Sadiq al mastuq He is the one that is absolutely truthful, and he is confirmed as being true. And that to the extent that his closest companion. Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Allah be pleased with him, is called a siddiq which is an emphatic way of saying the one that verifies what is true. That he is the verifier, the ultimate verifier of truth, of objective reality, because he was the closest to Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was the one that was exposed to mo the most to the reality of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that he was this, was, this was reality, this was the window of reality for Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Allah be pleased with him. And so he has the maqam of as siddiq the one that is the ultimate verifier of truth. The one that is the ultimate, because he was the closest to the, he was the closest to the Prophet Sallallahu to the extent that Allah Ta'ala calls him the sahib of the Prophet Sallallahu That in the Quran Allah Ta'ala says, إِذْ يَقُولُ لِي صَاحِبِهِ لَا تَحْزَمْ In Surah At-Tawbah, when the Prophet Sallallahu says to his sahib, his closest companion, his companion, do not be sad. Do not be grieved. And so this is the this is the secret that we have. The secret of yaqeen in our hearts. That the people that don't have this religion, they look at us and they say, How do they have such certainty in their beliefs? How do they have such certainty in their beliefs? The secret that every Muslim has is Aman to Billah wa Aman to be Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That I believe this man was a truthful man, and the more I get to know him, the more I realize he could not be anything but the most truthful, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that even before he proclaimed the message, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was a sadiq al amin the truthful one, the one that is confirmed as being true, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so we should, we should really dedicate ourselves to learning about him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and have a daily routine or a nightly routine, a wird of reminding ourselves of him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of studying his shama'il, of studying his qualities, of studying the events that happened in his life, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because every, t every single thing we learn about him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, will no do nothing but confirm our iman. It will do nothing but confirm our iman. And that's the miracle of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is that he is really a window to the divine. He is a window to the divine. That as, just as you have, la ilaha illallah, conjoined with that is Muhammad Rasulullah. And those two are perennially, eternally conjoined. This is something that we can't imagine the reality of. We cannot imagine the reality of that just as Allah has revealed to us La ilaha illallah, He has revealed to us Muhammad Rasulullah. That the reality of La ilaha illallah is, is ascertained by going through the means of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu And that even that there is hadith, although it's a weak hadith, but it, many ulama convey it and it's not modu, it's not fabricated. That Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam, that when he made tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now what our forefather Adam alayhi salam made tawbah, repented to Allah, he, he asked Allah by the Prophet sallallahu to forgive him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, how did you know about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa I had not yet revealed him to you. And he said, when I gazed upon your throne, I saw written next to La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. It's an eternal combination. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Allah decreed it from the beginning that the Prophet Sallallahu is the Rasulullah. And so he said that I, I saw that it's conjoined and so I, I realized that you would not conjoin to your name in the maqam of Tawheed except that the one that's most beloved to you. And so I asked you by him and Allah Subhanahu wa said to him according to the hadith, it's true that he is the most beloved to me and I forgive you and because of him I created you. Because Allah Ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنُ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ The whole reason that we are here is to worship Allah. And who is the Imam of those that worship Allah? Who is the epitome of those that actualize the meanings of the Qur'an is the Prophet And so him and those that follow him, that's the point of everything. 
everything that we see around us is to is to remind people of Allah's oneness and to implement that into being like the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And we have to show gratitude for this gift. This is a gift from Allah. That even those of us, some of us might have embraced this as converts. That's a gift from Allah. Allah gives a tawfiq. Wa ma tawfiqi illa billah. And the reality of shukr, according to Imam al-Junaid rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, a shukr an la tara nafsaka ahlin lil ni'mah. A shukr an la tara nafsaka ahlin lil ni'mah. The, the gratitude is that you don't see yourself as worthy of the blessing. Gratitude is that you do not see yourself as worthy of the blessing. That we should not see ourselves as, as worthy of Islam. We're not worthy of it. It's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then reflect on all of our blessings. Reflect on our health. Do we deserve our health? Do we deserve our eyesight? Do we deserve our ability to hear? Just imagine going for one day without eyesight, without hearing. Really, reflect. Reflect on the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on all of us. That one of the names of al-insan, one, one of the words in Arabic that, that means the human being is al-alam. Al-alam in Arabic means the universe, but it also means in classical Arabic, the human being. Because the human being is a universe. A human being is a universe. And we now know today, scientifically, that the more you open up and magnify under the microscope the human being is that you get more layers and layers of universes. That you go down to muscles and tissue and nerves and blood vessels. And then there's a whole intricate system of organs and communication and the brain and the spinal cord. And then you open up more and then you have cells. And the cell is an entire universe that has the nucleus and the Golgi apparatus and endoplasmic reticulum and it has a whole a whole world of, of events. And then you open that up and then you have atomic particles and then protons and neutrons and then you go further and further and further and it's just, and every, it's a universe. And who's controlling all of that? What, are these not gifts from Allah ta'ala? If you try to count one blessing of Allah, try to count the blessing of our health. The blessing of this, of this vehicle Allah has given us and it, you'll study biology and neurology your entire life. And you won't be able to count this one ni'mah. Wa in ta'udu ni'mat Allah. Allah says if you try to count one ni'mah of Allah. It, literally, if you try to count what is entailed in one ni'mah of Allah, la tuhsuha. You will not exhaust that one blessing. You will not exhaust that one blessing. That's the tafsir of Imam Bita'i. That he refers to it as a singular. If you try to count one blessing of Allah, you will not be able to enumerate what is entailed in that one blessing. And are we worthy of these blessings? That the blessings of just the hands, something we don't reflect upon is the hands. That people that, if they have hand problems, they realize that their whole world changes. They can't function anymore. That simple things like picking up a bag, doing your groceries, turning the key to your car, turning the knob of the door, being able to type. So many people, their whole livelihood is based on the computer. That these fingers, these hands, and this is one of the meanings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah ta when He curses Abu Lahab, when He curses Abu Lahab, what does He say? Tabbat yada abi lahabiyun. Tabbat yada abi lahabiyun. And the first one, tabbat, is a du'a. And if Asirin mentioned that tabbat in that ayah, the first word tabbat, is a, is a, it's, a, it's a verb that means may it happen. It's a du'a. So the translation is may the two hands of Abu Lahab perish. Tabbat yada abi lahabir. May the two hands of Abu Lahab perish. Now how does the ayah end? Wa tabba. This is a reality. It's not a du'a. And he did perish. So Allah makes a du'a and it's answered it by the end of the ayah. But look at the difference. The first one is referring just to the two hands and that's why it's feminine. Tabbat yada. May the two hands of Abu Lahab perish. What's the response that when the du'a is answered? Wa tabba. And the whole being of Abu Lahab in fact is perished. Because if you lose your two hands, you're, all, you're destroyed. It's as if your entirety is gone because you can't function anymore. If you lose your two hands, it's as if the entirety of the person is gone. So when Allah cursed the two hands of Abu Lahab, the response was Watabba, and his entirety was destroyed. SubhanAllah, just yada, the ni'mah of two hands. <laughs> Thank you.
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله كثيرا الحمد لله وشكر الله and so we reflect on on gratitude and inculcating gratitude that the basis of it is humility the more blessings that we receive in our lives and the more we open our eyes and realize the blessings that we have we should be humble that the state of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa taala is they are humble by the blessings of Allah upon them. And they're always perceiving these blessings, and so they're always in a state of humility. That to not see yourself as worthy of the blessing. There's a narration, it's mentioned that Herod of Adin, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala narrates to our Prophet, the Prophet Jesus alayhi salatu salam, Prophet Isa alayhi salam, Allah uh, revealed to him that إِذَا أَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكَ بِنِعْمَةٍ إِذَا أَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكَ بِنِعْمَةٍ that if I إذا إذا أنعمت عليك بنعمة عفوا إذا أنعمت عليك بنعمة if I bless you with a particular blessing فاستقبلها بالاستكانة then receive it with a state of humility if I send you a blessing then receive it with a state of brokenness and humility and then it continues وتمنها عليك and if you do that I will complete it for you that not only is humility the appropriate response to a blessing but it's actually the key for that blessing to be multiplied even more. That if we realize the blessings of Allah upon us with a state of humility, with a state of humility and brokenness, Ya Allah, I do not deserve this. And especially, this applies especially to those of us that have a lot of worldly success and a lot of religious success. If we're finding ourselves with tawfiq from Allah in, 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 in performing the religion at a high level, extra prayers, extra fasting, extra dhikr, extra consciousness of the divine. Don't think, we can't think it's from ourselves. These are gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا تَوْفِيقِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ وَمَا تَوْفِيقِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ And especially with worldly success, that if people are finding themselves excelling in their professional endeavors, excelling in their studies, excelling in their social abilities, whatever the blessings are, don't think it's from ourselves. We can't think it's from ourselves. That it's from Allah. And that it's a type of delusion to think it's from your own intrinsic ability. And so the Fir'aunic impulse is to see it as this is from me. And the ana in the heart gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The ego. Whereas the response of the prophetic way is to accept it bin istikana. Is to receive it with the state of humility. I don't deserve this. Why is Allah giving me this? I'm bewildered as to why this is coming in my life. Why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving me these ni'am? I have no explanation because I don't deserve it. If I reflect on my real reality, there was people in this ummah when, the, when they used to pray two rakahs of nafil, they would make, afterwards they would make tawbah as if they just committed theft. There's people in this ummah when they used to pray two rakahs of nafil, they would make tawbah, ask Ya Allah, and they felt as if they just committed theft. Not because prayer is like theft but because their performance of the prayer was akin to a robber in their eyes. Uh, my performance is nothing. Really, my performance is nothing. Anything that good is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are, these are realities and these are keys to immense openings. Th those same people had immense openings with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we're wondering why we're not finding openings in terms of drawing near to Allah, spiritual openings, it's because we have too much nafs inside of us. We're full of ourselves. Really, there's too much ana. That to let go of the ana. One of the masters said, Al-Tawheed isqat al-ya'at. One of our masters said, Tawheed, the definition of affirming that Allah is alone, is to get rid of the, the letter ya in Arabic, which when attached to a word, like for example, minni, this is from me, ana, minni, the ya. Ilayya, this is to me. Anni, this is about me. He said, Isqatul Ya'at, it's to get rid of that pronoun ana and to replace it, Hada min Allah, Hada ilallah, Hada alillah. This is from Allah, the good is from Allah. This good deed is going back to Allah. This whole thing is about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take out the ana and the ya and put Allah, 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 Allah. And when that happens, you realize that that is the spiritual opening. You don't have to wait for anything else. When you real, <laughs> the people that have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the dhikr of Allah in their tongues and the dhikr of Allah in their hearts, they're not waiting for anything else. That's all they want. And that's the greatest blessing from Allah. That's the greatest opening. And that's why the highest level of shukr, the highest level of shukr is to realize that your shukr is not from you. 
There's narrations that Dawood is making dua to Allah and he's saying, Ya Allah, thank you for this blessing. Ya Allah, thank you for this blessing. And he's enumerating the blessings of Allah. Ya Allah, thank you for this. And he gets to a point where he says, Ya Allah, how can I thank you when my very gratitude is a gift from you? And, it, and Allah Ta'ala reveals to him, now you've shown shukr. That right there is shukr. That's the reality of shukr is to realize that even our shukr is a ni'mah from Allah. What good have we done? Go to Allah bankrupt, and He will fill our accounts, inshaAllah. Approach Allah completely empty and bankrupt, and He will fill our accounts, inshaAllah. But if we have something in the account in our minds, of me, myself, and I, of my achievements and my performance, a'udhu billah. That's not the essence of Tawheed. We're still Muslim, alhamdulillah, but that's not the heart of Tawheed. And we need to, as true shukr for this religion, is to embrace it with seriousness. And one of our masters, Ruaim, said, a shukr is taqa. He said, it's to exhaust yourself in these meetings. It's to exhaust yourself. When you're out of energy trying to, trying to realize these meanings, and that's why one of our masters said, he said, Hamdun al qasar rahimahullah, he said that true shukr, true shukr is to see yourself. He said, Antara nafsaka fi shukri tufayliya. He said, true shukr, Antara nafsaka fi shukri tufayliya. He said, true shukr is to see yourself as an uninvited guest in this banquet of shukr. Is to see yourself as an uninvited guest in this banquet of shukr. Because real shukr is simply Allah praising Himself. The whole thing is Allah praising Himself. And even the tongues and the hearts of human beings that are inspired to praise Allah, it's still Allah praising Himself. وَمَا تَوْفِيقِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ هُوَ الْأَوَّلُ وَالْآخِرُ وَالْظَاهِرُ وَالْبَاطِنُ Everything good in this world is Allah. And the reality of gratitude is still Allah praising Himself. And that's why He reveals Alhamdulillah. And His revelation of Alhamdulillah is the divine speech of Allah praising Himself. And so if we have the tawfiq to say it on our tongues, it's still a manifestation of Allah praising Himself. So we can't get in the way. Just get out of the way and say Alhamdulillah. Allah, you're amazing because even you, even our, the little bit of good that you created in us is you praising Yourself. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us realize in shukr. We ask Allah Ta'ala to forgive us for our arrogance. We ask Allah Ta'ala to purify our hearts for of our egos. That Rabbana Atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina ala bin nar. Rabbana Atina mila dunka rahmatan wa hayya anana min amlina rashada. Rabbana taqabbil minna innaka anta al-samir alim. Wa tuba alayna innaka anta al-tawabu rahim. Wa tuba alayna innaka anta al-tawabu rahim. Wa tuba alayna innaka anta al-tawabu rahim. Allahumma inna nasaluka al-afiyya fi dunya wa al-akhira. Allahumma inna nasaluka al-afiyya fi dunya wa al-akhira. Allahumma inna nasaluka al-afiyya fi dunya wa al-akhira. اللهم فرج عنا وعن المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم فرج عنا وعن المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم فرج عنا وعن المسلمين في كل مكان يا أرحم الراحمين يا الله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله وأقيم الصلاة